So then... Mm.
However... However... So, um... So in other words, That's enough. <laughs> Goodbye.
Yes, indeed. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. 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 
Hmm. It's all clear now. <laughs> Goodbye. I mean... Right. Don't be mean! What? Well... It's nothing. Hey. And? I mean... Let me out of here! <laughs> you got it all wrong! It would seem... Is that okay? <laughs> Could it be... That's terrible! <sighs> Just the worst! What? What? That's right. Hmm. Um... What the heck? 
Please! What are you saying? What the heck? Okay. Huh. See, look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. Ah. Uh, um. Just a second! <laughs> but... Honestly... What the heck? <laughs> Just the worst! That's terrible! What? 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 Then perhaps... Then. Hmm. I'm at least thirty percent right. Correct. <laughs> Please. What the heck? Uh, um. Oh, so then. Uh, um. Uh, 
<laughs> Just the worst. Please. What are you saying? Hmm. What? What? Makoto. It would seem... Why is that? Anyway... Shall we go? Hey! Correct. Hey. Anyway. So then... I knew it. I see. Hey! Whew! So then... That's right. In other words... However, Makoto, because hey. Is that right? So then... Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Why is that? Hey. However, uh, um, yep. 
Is that right? So... Hey. So then... Is that right? Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death! And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot! Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school! <laughs> See you soon! It would seem... Shall we go? Monokuma appears! Wrong! Whew. Boy! <laughs> Tough crowd. Stop talking. Okay. Hey! Hey! Let's go. Please! What the heck? What the heck? Hmm. <laughs> hey. That's right. Just the worst. Wah -wah? Come on.
Let's begin with a basic explanation of if you can f and I'll punish e Now then, to begin with... We already know who did it! Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Don't try and deny it! You killed them! I didn't! Someone knocked me out! I, I was asleep the whole time! I don't know anything about it! Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough. Shoot! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit part. No, that's wrong! Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different, wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints. There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting, no, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro is innocent as well. What? Then who was in that Robo-Justice suit? 
Is it like Hiro said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. So? Who was in the Robo Justice suit? I got it! Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense! You just said Hero didn't do it! It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? I got it! I got it! They were a dolly and a tarp, right? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room, and then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that, up until then, was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there, and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you.
You have it wrong. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. So pathetic. Do your worst. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. So pathetic. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. You have it wrong. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. I cannot agree. This should prove it. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo-Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then... What kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. Then you could push the dolly no problem. So the killer and carted the body. If you accept, then you must realize that who. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think I realize any. As we know, talk and from there. The yeah, the cult then loaded it onto. Now, keep in mind. Well, yeah. All you'd have to do is. No, that's wrong. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What, what do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together, remember? When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? I got it! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember...
That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Uh, of course I wasn't making it up! If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So... It's really, really true that Robo-Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo-Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah... Yeah, that's gotta be right! <laughs> Hold on a second! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right then. Let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo-Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo-Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor, and I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. And then... Oh. 
At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office, while Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us, and she told us something very surprising. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after. We already know what or Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the number of the Justice Hammers. Shoot. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after- We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer- It's true that Hifumi was killed while Taka's death- See? So it's obvious Taka came after- So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer. While Taka's death. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, regarding I wonder if he or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. So, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? 
We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed while Taka's death. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, I wonder if you or perhaps it was- We already know what order they were. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. It's true that Hifumi while Taka's death. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, I wonder if you or perhaps it was- We already know what- <laughs> No, that's wrong! Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Is... is this really the end for all of us? I refuse to give up yet! Now I understand! I've got it! Taka's wristwatch! See? Look! It broke with the hands pointing just past 6 o'clock! It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night... So if it wasn't broken after 6 last night... Then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around 6, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. 
Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Don't just go making stuff up! Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. The, the dead body m m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another ghost! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he would- No. It is Hifumi was dead, and you know that surely you heard the body of Hifumi's dead body, and that is what- Are we really- Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Are you saying that when we first there's a chance he was actually No. It is in Hifumi was dead. Without And you know that how surely you heard the body discovery announcement. Hifumi's dead body. <laughs> no, that's wrong! Well, 
Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time, which means even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, hmm. There was no notable difference. No, that's wrong! In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. 
This piece of cloth was used to wipe Ifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Kifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Tiggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Kifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Hmm. Hmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then... If he was just pretending to be dead... What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out! So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! God, what an idiot! And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I... I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Hmm. Yes. His pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. Ah! That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait. This one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero. And that person could only have been... I got it! 
That's right, Taka. The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello, over here. Objection, objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy. Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Huffy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Huffy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! Puffy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Hobby! Shoot! Puffy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Hobby! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! No, that's wrong! No, there absolutely is a connection! What? What the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> Then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. Ugh. The culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less! Most likely, Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then... 
Who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait! But me and Sakura were together! Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more! And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! No, that's wrong! The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously, a different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him! Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. 
So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is only the one who actually carried out assuming the rule holds true. No, that's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Th that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems odd. understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now!
Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit for brain fat, lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Uh, 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 pardonnez-moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. S sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well... If Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... The whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? 
I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said was... They must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to... We are going to die. Just like those guys die. Shoot! All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to... We are going to die. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to... What was so strange about Celeste's comment? All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just... No, that's wrong. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation.
I got it! It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. <gasps> That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Me up in that suit after I passed out. <laughs> then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune telling idiot is the culprit after. No way! You dressed me up in that. Then you just draped me up. You tried to make me look. Like I said, as you can see in the picture, if the person inside. There's no way. They no, that's wrong. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <sighs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> Well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? C Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hagakure! Wait, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro. But are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. 
Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No, there's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. What did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Fine! Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Kafumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? pretending it's the truth and since you have no way to contradict me that's the only truth there is moron the Fumi was trying to tell us something he wanted us to know the killer's last name Yasuhiro if there's one person here who might have that last name it would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name. How many times I? Celestia Ludenberg. How long do you plan? I'm not pretending. And since you have no way to contradict, that's the only truth there is. Moron. If Fumi was, he wanted us to know the killer's last name. If there's one person here, it would have to be you, Celeste. How many times I? Celestia Ludenberg. How long do you plan to go on? I'm not pretending. You have no way to call. No, that's wrong. That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Until the game's over, you never know what might happen! Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end.
The killer is you! Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Kifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hiro. The murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the robo-justice suit. Next, Hifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo-Justice was attacking him. While the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hiro. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo-Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo-Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds. That the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that, but... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back, and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He 
he wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Here's exactly what happened! But e Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Celeste! Sorry, you lose. Lost? I lost? When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote, okay? Okay. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What? Honestly. I knew it. <laughs> so then. <sighs> Indeed. Say what? Just a second. <laughs> In other words... Indeed. I see. Actually, what are you okay with this? 
So then... Damnation! <sighs> Say what? As for me... Oh, um... As for me... What? Ugh. Damnation! Say what? <laughs> Completely unforgivable! Most unfortunate. Hmm? Actually... What? <sighs> Indeed. <sighs> this is unforgivable! Completely unforgivable! Honestly. I swear I will save her! Actually... Huh? <laughs> <sighs> hmm? Um, I see. Indeed. But... Hmm. Huh? Let's see. <laughs> well... Are you okay with this? So in the end... <laughs> what the heck? Well... Don't be mean! I wonder about that. Why? Honestly. As for me... Isn't it wonderful? This is fine. <sighs> there 
is nothing to be done. Just the worst. Oh. Do you understand? <laughs> this <laughs> Yes, indeed. <sighs> Isn't it wonderful? Hey. <laughs> Thrills, chills, kills! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Well then, take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Let me out of here! Too bad! What? So then, you. Who? 
Hey. Ooh, how exciting. Hello. Well? See ya later! So... Huh? Hmm. Hey! Indeed. Hey! What? So... Come on! What? Goodbye. Well then... Yo! <laughs> okay. Shall we go? So then. However... What? Indeed. What? It's true. That's fine. Correct. Correct.
Why, you? What do you think you're doing? I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this? How dare you defy me? This wasn't part of the deal! I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. Hmm. Okay. But you do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? <coughs> Indeed. Huh? 
Okay. What? What? <laughs> I see. It's true. You got it! You know? We're serious. Well... Hmm. According to the spirits... However... How about that? Hmm... It's not like some occult mystery. The occult is bullcrap! So, um... We got it all wrong! So... Actually... Hmm... But... The end is nigh! Some crazy beam came out of nowhere and locked onto my hamburger. And as soon as the beam touched it, the burger started floating in midair. And then, still floating there, the entire burger started coming apart. One part of it just vanished while the rest fell back into my hand. Do you realize what that means? It means the burger wasn't 100% beef. It must have had some pork or something mixed in. Something like 70% pork and 30% beef would be my guess. You can't trick me. How about that? Ugh. Don't be mean. <laughs> yeah! Of course. Indeed. Well. But... Mm-hmm.